Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Nintendo E3 is over, but their news keeps coming as they're determined to keep the summer momentum rolling because they just dropped new release date info for their latest Switch game, and it's coming soon, like really soon. Plus, is another Amiibo fiasco brewing? Hidden features, scalpers gone crazy, I'm gonna need you all to weigh in. And Nintendo Switch has a broken update that is plaguing Switch players across the globe. There still is no fix, this still is a massive issue, and I wonder at what point does this just become totally unacceptable? So what's going on guys and girls? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hope you're all having a lovely, wonderful day. Make sure to smash that like button and chime in on the comments. There's two critical issues here that I really wanna hear from you about. And if you're new here, welcome to Good Morning Mario, your perfect place for Nintendo fun, passion, news, info, games, and more. We are gonna get rolling with Pokemon Unite. The Pokemon company said huzzah, we bringing you the heat. E3, a couple days ago, we still got Shine, and they dropped a brand new trailer for Pokemon Unite, a game we haven't heard from in quite a while. And this, to me, is surprising. The game was initially kind of debuted as a mobile title also on Switch, but they're leading with our hybrid platform. Pokemon Unite releases next month, July 2021, for Switch owners, and won't hit cell phones until September. I actually think that's kind of cool to see them prioritizing Switch fans and hopefully the game can find an audience and hopefully it has the quality to earn it on this console. Now, why no date for July? That's just one month or less away. Either it's such a moving target that they still don't know what exact day they can hit or or there's another Pokemon presentation that will be giving the specific release date. Nonetheless, I think this game looks super cool. And even though I'm not the biggest MOBA fan, based on what I heard from the beta and the Pokemon roster established, I gotta download this one. Let me know if you're gonna be playing it next month in July with me. This summer though, whew, it's a wallet explosion. Mario Golf Super Rush, The New World Ends With You, Zelda Skyward Sword HD, No More Heroes 3 is around the corner, and now Pokemon Unite, which is free, thank goodness, but there are microtransactions. And some people consider the new Amiibo to be microtractions of a sort. You remember the Loftwing debacle, where they unveiled their Skyward Sword Amiibo to be pricey and problematic for a lot of fans. This is a Zelda Loftwing combo Amiibo that houses a special feature, effectively bringing a simple system of fast travel to the game. Now, plenty of players were very bothered by this, not only because they felt gypped on the feature, but because scalpers took the prices sky high almost instantly, and nobody wants to drop 50 or $60 on a freaking Amiibo that has a feature they want. Now, is Metroid Dread doing the same thing? Metroid Dread, all sorts of good feelings and fuzzy vibes because this game has been rumored and in development for like 16 years and now it's real. But they've got their own $30 amiibo pack featuring Samus and Emmy. These guys also have special features, but I'm curious what you think. Because back with Loftwing, I went on record and said, hey, I know this is a nice feature and it sucks that it's not more easily acquirable, but I don't think it's game changing or game breaking. There already is a sort of fast travel in the game via the bird statues and so like, it's not the biggest deal. Although I understand the frustration, I think the game is totally fine without. And once again, guys, the Metroid Dread Amiibo seem to me to be that same way. Maybe even less of an issue, although scalpers are really trying to make it a problem. So Samus here grants you a new energy tank and you can tap her to grab some extra health. And then Emmy is gonna give you a missile tank and you can tap for missile refill. Now to me, this is much better than what they did with Samus Returns on 3DS, where the squishy Metroid amiibo had an entire mode attached to it. The fusion hard mode was locked behind this amiibo and even though they put another hard mode in the game locking a mode that to me now is more of a problem because now this really is hey you gotta buy this if you want to experience everything there should be a lot of missile tanks and energy tanks and even though i see some people trying to spin this as like oh gosh nintendo is hiding important things once again and you won't be able to be a full samus without no i think it's just going to make the game easier. It seems like there's some dread and dread. It seems like those Emmy robots are really after Samus's super cool new suit. And these Amiibo taps are just going to make things a tinge easier. 
So for me, the Metroid Dream Amiibo are even less of a problem than the Loftwing Amiibo, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. How do you feel about these new Amiibo and do you plan to pick them up? One thing I, think I will say is a problem is scalpers skyrocketing the price of the collector's edition, which looks like a cool package, and I hope a lot of true fans can get it, especially after all the waiting we've done with the Metroid franchise. It sucks to see this thing just being a way for people to make money. And the Amiibo, like, I don't know if it's gonna see a similar fate, but man, we gotta find a way to end this, whether it's PS5s or Switch special editions. You shouldn't have to pay so much darn money, right? You know what else you shouldn't have to deal with? Error code 2123 1502. All right, we covered this like two weeks ago. Nintendo did something super spooky and released an update and then pulled it. And then they put it back. It was update 12.0.3 and it didn't bring anything substantial except a major problem because now there are people all over the planet still plagued with this issue. And the big problem, they can't download anything. Imagine how bummed you would be if your Switch was effectively stuck with the games it had. You couldn't grab anything off the eShop, not even during this amazing colossal eShop sale that Nintendo just put on. You can't get any of it. And I've even seen a lot of you in my comment sections and in my DMs telling me, Zach, what do I do? How do I fix this? I'm still getting this download error. I can't even get the games I paid for. That to me is unacceptable. And Nintendo still has no fix. They have a possible solution on their website, which is basically restart your system and download again and again and again. And I've had some people tell me that they tried five, six, seven, eight times and managed to get it to work, but this isn't across the board. People have also told me that they can't make it work at all. And I wonder, when does this just become wrong and unacceptable? I'm sure Nintendo is working on it, but it's more than a bummer to hear that some people's systems just don't do what they're supposed to do weeks after the problem developed. Now, yes, Nintendo has had their hands full. They just put on a big presentation, they dropped the Direct, and they revealed a ton of games but that doesn't mean that they can ignore their already existing users that paid good money, bought a bunch of games, and now can't play them properly. And look, if you're still affected by this, you got to let me know in the comments down below. I wanna hear your experience, your issue, and how long it's been. Because this doesn't just apply to new purchases, people are having trouble downloading their already purchased games, and ugh, I feel for you. I hope they figure this out fast. And as soon as I hear of a solution or someone tells me one that's reliable, I will let you know because I can't, it just sucks. And to me, we're teetering on the edge of like, dude, you gotta fix this. And frankly, I'm surprised this issue isn't making more noise. You know, it's probably because E3 is just overshadowing everything. But if this continues much longer, they might be better off just releasing a new update and hopefully they can release one that is devoid of error codes and just patches everything up for people. Like put a bandaid on this issue and let's leave it in the past. There's a lot of great Switch games out there and I want you all to be able to experience them. Not just the ones that didn't get stuck with this super sucky update. All right, it's time for the pole dance. No, <laughs> it's time for the pole. Let's do a dance. Separate things, not the same at all. What was your favorite newly announced Nintendo Switch game? I listed the big five from E3, and you guys can be a part of the polls each and every evening on the community tab. Make sure to turn that notification bell on so you can be a part of our conversations. Now, this one maybe isn't so much of a surprise, but the spread is interesting. The big winner was Metroid Dread. 48% of you saying you are so glad that Samus has returned with another Mercury Steam game after Samus Returns. And then 26% of you, this one's a bit surprising, and me picked Mario Party Superstars. Now I had a super tough time choosing because I think Mario plus Rabbids is the one that I might be most hopeful for, although that game is 2022. And I think WarioWare Get It Together, which got 9% of the vote, is the one that I freaked out the most at the trailer. But upon hearing new information and how much they are trying to optimize and improve and just catalog my Mario Party childhood, all those great moments with my friends and family playing some of the best mini games I've ever experienced, I had to give the award to the new, old, remake, remaster, retooled Mario Party experience, especially since it's dropping this October. Now, Mario Plus Rabbids did get 12%. As I mentioned, WarioWare next up with 9%. 
Good old Advance Wars. Man, that is a relic of the past because only 5% of you picked Reboot Camp. Even though I think those games are worth revisiting, $60 is sort of a lot for two very old at this point handheld titles. Maybe they would have been better off using the $50 WarioWare price point or introducing a new campaign or finding some way. It does have online multiplayer, which is great. There is a map editor and the campaigns are lengthy. So hopefully the conversation turns a bit more positive as we approach December 3rd. But right now it's all Metroid Dread and Mario Party superstars. Well, that'll do it for another Good Morning Mario. You guys and girls are my superstars. Thank you so much for being a part of this show and making it what it is. I have you all to thank and I'm so very grateful. So get out there, enjoy the rest of your day, play some Switch games, unless you're stuck with 21, 23, 1502, then, ugh, <laughs> Nintendo, you got to fix this, okay? You better fix it before GMM 100. Until that time, everybody, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive out there. Thanks again, everybody. Switch Force, out.